Much expected of Leonard Fournette this season, and more importantly, the LSU Tigers expected to compete uh, for an SEC Western Division Championship and beyond. And to do that in the SEC, obviously, the offensive line has to be rock solid. We bring in Billy Gomilla from And the Valley Shook, the SB Nation platform for LSU football and athletics overall. We, Billy, we enjoy the breakdown every time uh, we got to talk offensive line because these guys go uh, nameless much of the season for a lot of fans, but they are necessary, especially in this league against these defensive fronts. Uh, you got a really one good one coming back in Ethan Posick at center. Uh, he could have gone to the NFL, but you're in, in a really good uh, uh, spot starting at the center position and at guard as well. Yeah, Ethan Posick, it, it, you know, he was a second team all conference selection last year, uh, preseason first team choice this year, you know. Poised to be one of the best centers in the country and, and, and be a high draft pick when the, when the season ends. You know, it sets up really well for him. He, he missed spring practice with a, with a little off-season surgery, but I, I've been told he's full go this summer and, you know, ready to rock and roll in that, at that position. And, and uh, the, the interior of this line should be pretty locked up with him and, and Will Clapp at one of the at one of the guard spots for sure. Uh, Maya Tehuma who was uh, one of the other great freshman guards on that, that unit last year, could be slotting out the tackle. It's kind of a wait-and-see thing. He played there in the spring. It's a little heavy for tackle. He, he didn't play it in high school. He was a you know, fairly highly recruited uh, high school tackle. But the people are just wondering maybe he's a little too heavy. He doesn't quite have the feet to play left tackle. But I'm told he's been shedding some weight, and it's kind of a wait-and-see, and, and they'll see what he comes in at. They're happy with the weight he comes in at, maybe a little closer to 300 instead of 350 pounds. He'll play outside of left tackle. And, you know, in LSU's offense, it's not like you have to be Jonathan Ogden out there, you know, some kind of dancing bear uh, to, deal with, to deal with pass rushes all the time. You do have to, to be able to pass block some, but at the end of the day, run block is going to be, you know, at the premium on this team. Now, for uh, to him and Clapp, uh, it, it's pretty remarkable to step into the SEC as freshmen and perform as well as they did. Uh, to him, uh, started the final 10 games of the season at left guard. You mentioned Clapp at right guard. He started 11 games. Both received uh, all SEC uh, honors as freshmen and uh, freshman All-American honors as well. Step out to the tackle position, things a little bit more muddled, less experienced, uh, maybe less talent, but definitely less experienced. Can you sort things out and let us know where we may stand uh, at the end of August? Well, uh, like I said, Tahima is probably the, the, the early candidate left tackle. Uh, Toby Weathersby, who was a uh, freshman last year, kind of a surprise to get in the lineup and, and play. I think he started against Ole Miss. Didn't, didn't do great, but, you know, freshman first start on the road. It's not hard. I guess a good defensive line at that. That's not hard to, uh, you know, that's not too hard to imagine. Um, he's probably your best candidate to start at right tackle. Uh, and then after that, there's kind of, there's, there's definitely a lot of talent. There's uh, a number of, of, you know, LSU's recruited really, really well at that spot the last couple of years, especially with a, a number of guys that play tackle. So, They've got the luxury uh, of not really having to force any one guy out there. Uh, one guy who's a super intriguing candidate, Chidi Valentine of Kiki, uh, five-star recruit, guy who's barely played any football, c c came to this country from, I believe, Nigeria. And uh, this is only something like his third year playing organized football. He, he athletically is an NFL left tackle. He doesn't quite have the total skill set yet. Like He's kind of got the feet, but he doesn't quite have – the upper body and the hands yet. You can see, you saw in the spring game at times, you know, he could stay in front of guys, but when they just straight bull rushed at him, he struggled a little bit. But he's only a redshirt freshman, so there's time. And it's going to be one of those things that when he gets in that lineup, it's going to be, you know, a lot of fun to watch, but there's no real rush and no real urgency to push him out there, which is a good thing, I think, for his development. And that's pretty good. If you let that sink in, it's in uh, Nigeria, Nigeria, and three years later, he's uh, on the field of Tiger Stadium lining up against Alabama and Ole Miss and the likes. Uh, so that's, that's pretty special stuff right there. Uh, Four-star New Orleans tackle Willie Allen could uh, get in the mix as well as the true freshman. All right, uh, LSU's going to need that offensive line, obviously, the way they uh, like to churn it ahead, and Brandon Harris is going to be given uh, apparently more opportunities in the passing game this year and need to deliver because man the talk at sec media days billy was uh, it's a championship or bust uh, kind of type outlook for this uh, football team this year 
well, it's, it's going to be one of those years where, you know, it's, it's probably going to come down to LSU and Alabama, and there's a really good chance that the one team may be the, be, that is, you know, may be the second best team in your own division and the second best team in the country. So we're going to see. But it, this is an experienced team, and it's a team that's got a, a fairly navigable schedule, could be set up to make a run here. The, the power index that different networks and different organizations have is a bit of a mystery to me, especially when they haven't played a game. But obviously it has to do with last year's performance, what you lost and, and slightly what you brought in in regards to top level recruits. Are, are you a bit surprised that LSU seems to be this overwhelming favorite? It's like 32 percent to win the SEC, Alabama, Georgia, some other teams close to single digits, right around 10 percent. Well, I don't really know how, how ESPN's uh, FPI is uh, done. I know that in uh, SB Nation's advanced metrics, LSU's right up there. I think they're number two, but Alabama is number one. Um, you know, it, it, it makes sense. It, I think you can justify with the fact that there's just so much back, and LSU's been a team that for a couple of years now has lost a lot of, of underclassmen to the draft. And that forces you to play a lot of young guys, and that's what they've been doing for a couple of years now. This is going to be the first year where they don't really have that many spots that they have to push freshmen at. You know, they've got now, of course, they brought in some good ones who are going to push to play, but they don't have to play a lot of them. It is going to be intriguing. LSU's uh, bid to get back into uh, contention for the SEC Western Division versus Alabama and the rest. Uh, Billy Gomilla. From Man the Valley Shook on the SB Nation platform for LSU.